guys, it's Liliana the Magnificent and welcome back to my main study, Dukes of Honey. In this video, I am going to cover the second bar and by far the most popular bar question that I get in the game. And it is this little bar down at the bottom called FOE Helper. This bar used to be on the side of the screen, but with the newest update that made the first bar bigger, the second bar got put to the bottom. Now, what is FOE Helper? There are a lot of buttons. FOE Helper is a third party extension. Disclaimer Forge of Empires does not like give its backing or support per se to FOE Helper. It is a third-party extension. You have to use it at your own risk. FOE Helper, at least from what it seems, has been following any kind of um, concern announcement things that Forge of Empires has put out about third-party extensions and how they can make them safer. Um, so it is use at your own risk. They... If, if per se, FOE Helper um, gets notified by Forge of Empires that they need to change something and they don't change it fast enough, then by golly, I'm telling you right now to get it off of your PC until they do update it. But FOE Helper is really, really good about making updates and listening to Forge of Empires. So Hopefully it all kind of stays and works out. Um, there was a period earlier this year where there were some features on FOE Helper that um, Forge of Empires said no, no to, and they fixed them. They took them away, um, and they told um, users to make sure that you always keep FOE Helper on an automatic update so that if they ever put out more automatic updates, your system automatically updates. If, for instance, you're using an older version that um, has some of those things that Forge of Empires have banned and says are no-nos, then you could have your city banned. There was a time period, like I said, where some player cities were getting banned. Um, it wasn't necessarily per se because of FOE Helper, unless those players hadn't updated the version yet. There was something out there called FOE Power Tools, um, which I used for like one week, way before everybody else really knew about it. And... Um, one of my good friends, after about a week of using it, was like, um, I just realized that, like, this is a big no-no. And the reason why is because it essentially collected data in such a way that it reduced the amount of clicks that you took in your city. So that's what these third-party extension things do is they collect data, but FOE Helper still um, requires you to make the same amount of clicks as you would, whereas FOE Power Tools collected data in such a way that you really didn't have to do a lot. And that's why those accounts were getting banned, because FOE Power Tools was reducing um, the amount of clicks that you were taking. So sorry for my big long spiel, but it is very important to disclaimer that. So I am not saying that this is safe. I am saying that I use it with caution. I also say that you all should use this with caution. It has a lot of cool features, but I'm not saying that anybody should, you know, go and use this. You have to be mindful. And like I said too, if FOE comes out and says that FOE Helper needs to fix something or that they are no longer safe, then you need to take it off of your game um, or risk having your account being banned for a while. Um, this bar is also only available on PC, but let's jump in and we'll talk about it. So first thing, where it is. This bar is only available on a Google Chrome browser. What you have to do is you have to go to the Google Chrome web store. You tap extensions, not themes, and then you're going to type in FOE Helper, and it shows you right here, um, and obviously it's been added to mine, but um, it's free to download, and you'll press it, and it shows you, you can just add it from here, um, but that's essentially all it is. It doesn't 
download anything per se onto your computer. It's just associated with your Google Chrome browser. So let's say you use Safari or Explorer, then um, this would not be available to you. Okay, let's go. I, you guys see me use this a lot. So this first button is called the GB cost calculator. This button with the calculator has to do with others' great buildings, not your own. There's a separate button for that. So let's just click a random friend and we will see what they have going on. And a safe one is probably... Oh, he probably does, actually doesn't have hardly anything going on. But we'll show off his awesome buildings anyway, because he is he's my proud, my my pride and joy. Okay, anyway, um, if you click on here, right now it has the last um, player's great building that I was looking at. So in order to update this information, you need to click on an actual great building. And then you're going to click on the GB cost calculator, and it'll show you a lot of different information. So first it shows you who this player is, what the great building is, also what guild they are in. It'll show you what level they are working on towards what level. It shows you your personal available forge points at this time. It'll also show you the different arc bonuses. So you can click on all of these and it'll change this information here depending on what you click. You can also type in a specific one um, as well. So you can really kind of tailor it to your needs, who is going to be taking spots, what you want to take spots at what level and what cost, etc. So let's talk about what these mean and the colors. So the red essentially means it is not a safe lock. Yellow is what the 1.9 cost is, and it, it even shows you the spot is not safe. In order for this spot to be safe, either of two things need to happen. Either you personally need to add 968 more forge points, which would be a huge loss, or you wait for that owner of the great building to add these forge points in order to make it safe. Um, so let's see if in the 1.9 thread right now, if anybody has their buildings out, <laughs> and if not, then, well, this isn't very helpful, is it, for everybody to see. Um, hmm. I wonder if anybody's buildings anywhere would be. Oh, here. Oh, this is a good one. Okay, so his is going to be available right now. So if we click on his arc, you actually have to go in, like I said, to this information, but now you see that it's green. So that means that it is safely lockable. He's added the forge points to make this a safe lock, and then you can add it in. Now, there's also um, an ability to show you sniping information, and I haven't really gone sniping in a really long time, but, and we're not, I don't know, we can see if there's any out there in this world that might be available. If we do this really quick, I might be able to get an idea just by tapping. Ooh, his might be. Oh, okay, look at this. So this tells me I can actually lock in on his Tower of Babel at 114, and I will make one forge point <laughs> by doing so. Um, I'm probably not going to do that because only one forge point isn't that big of a profit for me, but <laughs> hey, that's something for ya. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know if there's anybody else around that, <laughs> that might show more. Oh, here's another one. I can put in 76 and I would get another one forge point back for that snipe, um, but yeah, once again, I'm probably not going to for the one forge point. Okay, so that's this first button. Second button is the GB calculator that is for your own great buildings. So what you need to do is you need to click on one of your great buildings that you want to look at, and then you click this button, and it also shows you a lot of really great information. So first thing, it shows you what building we're looking at, what level it is, and what level it's going to. You can also toggle here and change the different forge point cost so that that information will change as it goes. 
Um, then it'll show you how much or how many forge points others will be adding to your building. It shows you the total forge points required to level the or to uh, level this one level up. That totally makes sense, Lil. How many forge points you need to put in as an owner, oh, and as an owner, and also how many there are remaining. So that's the total. This is how many more you need to add. Next, um, anything that's blue is showing you um, things that you've already completed. So I've already put 11. Or people have already um, put on your building and are considered safe. So um, this player here, if I can move this around so you can see, is one of my daily swap partners. So he is already locked in at half. You can see that he's safely locked and he's done and at blue. Um, this is also over a 1.9 because he's my daily swap partner. So we go to half cost on buildings instead of the 1.9 value. It shows me green is how many more forge points I need to add in order to make a spot safe at the 90 or 1.9 leveling um, bonus. So I have to add 60 more and then somebody will be able to lock in at 200, which is the 1.9 value. Then after that, I would add 66 more forge points in order for somebody with a 67 lock and then so on. So ultimately you can see, and this is my little spielio, there's a lot more forge points that others are putting on than that versus what you have to put on. So much more efficient leveling than swap thread leveling, just saying. Okay, next features that are really nice. It also shows you down here, active recurring quest. This is how many more forge points you need to put onto a building before this little re reoccurring quest um, notification will pop up that you are ready to cycle, which I think is so nice that they do that. And then this is a new feature that they added, which is power leveling. So let's say you are speed leveling or bullet train leveling or power leveling with um, a group of people. Then you can have this information up and you can see how much all of these different players are going to put in and also how much you need to put in as an owner to just pump through levels. So awesome that they added that. So Super cool. Love it. Next is the settlement overview. You actually have to have a settlement going in order to see this information, but it will show you resources by item that you need for your settlement. Um, I don't have any that are currently going. <laughs> also, I haven't even clicked this to show that the Aztecs is available. Wow, I'm terrible. I'm just going to ignore that. Don't hate me. <laughs> Um, but that information will show you there something. I don't know what because I don't have anything available. This next one is super awesome. It is your production overview. So this shows you all of the different buildings in your city and what is going on. Um, it shows you how many you have, or uh, the, the quantity is, um, what in the heck does quantity mean? Quantity. Oh, hello, because we're on forge points. <laughs> Groovy girl. Quantity <laughs> shows you that my abandoned asylum is going to give me 11 forge points. It shows me the size, which is um, that square foot radius or footprint that it has in your city. Also, it shows you the different efficiencies of these different buildings. And this, this tab is just forge points, I should say. It also shows you the different eras that your buildings are. And it shows you when, um, if they're done, it means that they're ready to be collected versus if they're not done, it shows you when they will be ready to collect. Then um, if you also click list, it'll actually show you how many you have in a nice fancy little list. Like I have 14 shrines. Woohoo! I have 14 level two shrines. It's so that's just cool that it shows you that. Um, it does the same exact information for your coin production, your supply production, um, which I will say these are really helpful for your recurring quests. So um, I will click these if um, I need certain um, either supplies, you know, collect so many supplies or collect so many coins and you can kind of get an idea to, or even for special events, I use these as well for doing that. Um, metals, it shows you which of your buildings are collecting metals. 
Diamonds is really neat because it'll give you, it'll show you which ones in your cities could be giving you diamonds. So if you are collecting from your blue galaxy, you can kind of see if any of your buildings here are going to be giving you diamonds that day, which I don't know how it knows that, but we're just going to leave that there. <laughs> but it shows you. Like, I'm talking about random buildings, like your crow's nest. It knows. It's weird. Population shows you all of your buildings that have population. Um, happiness shows you all of the different happiness buildings that are in your city, along with ones like your abandoned asylum that take away happiness in your city. Crowns um, specifically show you which buildings in your city are giving you crowns, which buildings are giving your guild um, your guild treasury goods, and it shows you how many as well that it's giving, which is awesome. And be mindful, the Atomium Observatory and the Ark give you so many of each good. So even if it says only like six of each good, it's not six total, it's six times five. So that's why these numbers are huge. These buildings are massive for guild battlegrounds, just saying people. These are getting pushed by guilds more and more because when you're farming and wanting lots of rewards, you need that treasury to be nice and cushiony. Next, this also shows you which of your buildings are going to be giving you military units, which is super cool. Along with, this is one of my favorites actually, it shows you which of your buildings are giving you goods, but then it also breaks it down. So this is how many postmodern, this is how many modern, this is how many industrial. Um, wow, I have some industrial, oh yeah, duh, because of my um, great buildings. Hello there. <laughs> but it shows you then your total amount of goods that you're getting, which I should have also mentioned too. This information here shows you the total amount of forge points that you can collect from your city at this time. If you've already collected something, I don't know if this number changes. I haven't really paid attention to that while. This is how many coins you're going to be getting today. This is how much supplies you're getting today. <sighs> Super cool. Okay, yeah. Then this is also really nice too. Um, this is just a really big overview, and you can literally search anything. Oops, shrine. <laughs> and then you can go and just see that information. So it's it's just super cool. And then it also, you can filter as well. Oh, I just love it. Okay, next. Incidences. Um, this is something that FOE actually, like, slapped their hand about. Um, they used to show you future incidences. Uh, no more. Now they only show you that the ones that are available in your city at the present time. Um, they also don't show you exactly where they are. You actually have to still search for them. But it gives you a general idea. So like this one is on a beach. This one is on a forest. So then I know that if I'm searching around, something in my forest is going to be like, oop, there it is. Um, and you press on it. That's just in in general and then I knew this one was going to be on a beach so then you look for that um, and then once you press it then they go away. Next is a negotiation helper. This is only available in um, guild expedition with special event quests or daily challenge quests or um, on your continent. Oh nope there is no negotiations on your continent map. So I can't show you, but I, I mean, if you guys look at some of my other past videos, you can see the negotiation helper in action. But this is another thing that um, FOE slapped FOE helpers hand about because it used to show you with guild battlegrounds and it used to help you, but it doesn't do that anymore. So I don't have any negotiations available right now to show you guys that in action, um, but it just, it, it helps you. Okay, info. This info box, essentially, if you keep it running in the background just like this, it will collect any kind of notifications of somebody aiding you. If somebody sends a message within your message tab, it'll filter all that information here. It just seems a little too busy for me. <laughs> and But, I mean, granted, you can filter that information, which is cool. It's just, it's, it's, it's too much for me. <laughs> oh. Next is a notes pad. Um, also, I should say, any any of these tabs that have little question marks, if you press on them, that will take you to um, more information screens and how to use these different things. So this notes tab, essentially, you can create groups and pages with information, and these carry over for different devices 
However, you, because, you know, and the reason why it does that is because your Google Chrome looks at different devices as well. So let's say you have a tablet and you're using your personal Google account uh, with your email. It should all be still connected because Google Chrome keeps all of your extensions together. But what I will say is do not clear your browser history or cookies because once you do that, all of your information is lost. So be mindful of that. I clear my cookies quite often just to make things run faster and better. So when I do, all of your information in FOE Helper is gone once it does that. So be careful. Next, um, within your research tree, I just, I just tapped my research tree before this. That's why it's already active. But if we go into my research tree... All of these um, buttons, I will say, in order for them to collect data, you actually have to press these different things for them to collect the data that they need. But uh, this information here shows you what you need um, and or what's needed that you don't have in your inventory already. So like in contemporary era, I don't have an, enough template to research something in contemporary era, um, but I do have everything available to do postmodern era. Um, however, I will say FOE Helper, or not FOE Helper, FOE in general, um, put out this little button here, Research Costs, which is also available on your mobile, and it essentially does the same exact thing that FOE Helper does. So, cool that they added that. Next is your continent map, and for your continent map, you actually need to select an actual sector and once you do then you click on this and it'll show you what is needed um, for the the goods selection so this is not in the case if you want to attack this is just for if you want to negotiate this is how much it would cost however if you're going to attack then it's null and void so uh, yeah, it's a nice overview. Um, this is one of also my favorite things. It's the city overview. So it essentially shows you a map of your city and it shows you where there's some free open spots, which I don't have any free open spots in my city at the present moment, but it gives you an idea of just the footprint you have going on and how everything is organized. And obviously you guys can tell mine is a hot mess. Actually, I do have some open spots right here. Those are open. And those are open. Highlight. I have to redo my city. Oh, and those are open. And those are open. Yeah, I really need to redo it. It's a hot mess right now. Uh -huh. But um, it just, it's really nice. As you move things around, it does update. So super cool there. Next is your military units overview. Um, it shows you in the next 69 TRAS units when they will finish. And... Um, what I, I mean, I don't really understand this super well because, I mean, I'm not getting these units from my Traz. I'm getting universal tanks from my Traz, and I'm getting rogues, so I don't know where this rocket artillery shows up. I think it just shows you how many in general you have in total. Like, I have 559 rogues in my inventory, not my Traz, and I have 252 rocket artillery in my inventory, not my Traz. Um, so that's what it shows you, I think. Maybe not. Maybe those have to do with bonuses. I don't really know. All I know is this. This is really the only tab that I understand. And there's no question mark here, so that's why I haven't figured this out. So don't hate on me, people. If somebody understands what this means, maybe I explained it correctly. I don't know, but four doesn't make any sense. Maybe I don't have 559. Your guess is as good as nine, people. Anyway, like I said, this is my favorite part. This actually shows you the breakdown of everything you have in your inventory. I guess I lied. Do I shouldn't have 3,261. Do I really? That doesn't make sense. I'm going to have to go check now. <laughs> if I really have that many, then I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> oh, maybe I do have that many. 2,004 brogues. That does sound maybe more accurate than 559. This anyway shows you the breakdown of how many you have in all of your eras. So maybe I do have that many. I don't, I don't understand what this is. <laughs> Let's go check my army really quick. 
Oh, goodness gracious. Golly me. If we do PME, um, and then we scroll all the way to the end. Yeah, I do have 3,261. I have a lot of military units. I don't know where 559 came in. Somebody else can help me with that. If you are familiar and can understand that logic, you tell me because I have zero idea. I will raise my hand and say I need help because I don't know. Uh, next is your settings. Uh, don't do anything with this. I'm sure if you're like tech savvy, you can like bug the system. But then if you do that, FOE is going to ban you. So just don't do that. Just let them do what they do because I don't understand any of this. I'm sure. I don't know. You can change your language here. They have a lot of languages. <laughs> That's about the only thing I can help you with that there. Um, statistics. Okay. Um, a lot of people in my guild use this. Um, and it collects data while you're um, playing GBG or even collecting um, GE relics. And it'll show you like a pie chart of all of the rewards that you're getting, which is super cool. However, I clear my cookies all the time and I don't play enough on PC in order for it to gather any type of information. So I don't know. Yeah, it's not helpful for me. Uh, it's really bad. It shows you a lot of information that obviously I don't have anything of right now. So sorry, y'all. <laughs> Can't help you there. Uh, next, it has a guild live chat. I'm assuming you can like chat with your guild, but there is a guild live chat now button within your, well, on, P on mobile, it's attached where your little message button is down here, but I don't know. On here, it's up here, so I, I don't know. Why, I don't know if anybody uses that and why you would. I don't know. That just seems tedious. Um, sets and upgrades. This is really cool. This looks at your inventory, and it shows you what you have and... Um, how many upgrades you have of certain things. Like I've got one of this and I have one upgrade so I can make it a level two. Shows you how many different selection kits you have going on. It's just a nice breakdown um, with it being all in one place. Like I've got a lot of ships. Whew, boy, do I have a lot of ships. Um, I've got two of those. But yeah, it shows you that information. Oh, there was another ship too. Um, okay, next. GB investment. This one shows you um, which, um, like the cost of forge points that you would need to put on to different buildings in order to level them. Um, and just which ones are, you're going to get more bang for your buck than others. So like obviously right now, um, the innovation tower is going to be a better one than like my HC castle, which is really, really expensive to level right now. So I don't understand this fully though. So don't, this is just for which buildings you're getting forge points from. Granted your space carrier and HC don't directly give you forge points. You get a chance of winning forge points. So I don't really understand this one either the best. So don't quote me on that. I don't use it. That's probably for people that are more tech savvy than I. Hmm, blue galaxy. I pressed this one. So once you click on your little blue galaxy, this awesome little helper button will show up and it'll show you which buttons in order you should collect because you're going to get the most out of. So the Shinto temple you should do, the um, hippodrome you should do, crow's nest it shows you, um, another, my other half of my hippodrome, my Mikawa Bridge. So yeah, it just shows you which ones you should collect for forge points or goods and which ones you're going to get the most out of. So that is super cool that it shows you that. Um, okay. <sighs> this one is not a button, but I'll show that afterwards. Okay. Next is the Motivate and Polish Helper. This one is really cool. What you have to do is, I'll collect that just so that we can get in here. Once you go into your news and you click on the event history, this will automatically say that it, new events are found and it's updating. And you have to click through every single page 
and it'll collect this data. So you have to click through everything to do it, which is a little tedious, but it's what you would do if you were writing down everybody's names anyway. But then, um, ooh, we should probably do this a better way. Let's do it to the guildmates so that you can actually see what's going on. <laughs> So I see it just said one. It's collecting just the ones that it hadn't already. Ten. Ten. And this should hopefully have enough data. At least it'll show me today who has visited me. But then you click on this and it'll show you that like Marcella visited me today one time. Everyone else is never right now. I don't, oh, that's because we're looking at neighbors. She's my neighbor. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? derp de derp uh, <laughs> um, So these are my guild baits, and it shows you who's visited me today. And then it starts to keep track um, once you click through everybody, which is super cool because you can, like, see ooh, who's been naughty and who hasn't been aiding you. Next. Forge point collector. I'm assuming this, like, when you earn forge points, it's going to collect the data that you have. But I don't really understand because it still says no entries found. So if somebody knows about that one, you let me know because I just don't know. Next is something that is not a button down here. But if you click on the Battleground League, it will look at all of your members and it shows you your total number of negotiations that you've done so far this season, the total, and not you, but your whole guild, the total number of fights that you've done and then the total in general. So it kind of gathers all of that information. Along with that, if anybody ha is hitting anywhere, which this map needs to be refreshed. So I doubt anybody is touching this, but it'll, I'll show you me. How about that? I'll show you me. Um, right now, this is just general information, but uh, where is somewhere that I can hit? Um, hmm. Where can Liliana hit something that is? Well, this one is ready to go. Oh, this is not very helpful. <laughs> oh, no, this is not very helpful. Everybody's going to be ready to flip. Oh, hey, I could do that one down there. Okay, so no one has done anything, right? No. Here I am. I found the one sector that I could touch. And if we go here and I auto battle, it'll place a little flag. So it did that. Now, ready? Look at this. Now we go scroll and you can see. Ha ha! I've done one fight. So you can kind of gauge, granted you have to refresh this. So once I click out of this, um, this will refresh. Um, but if you want to keep track of making sure that nobody's flipping a sector, you can keep this refreshed and make sure you can, you can see who's been hitting things. So that's really cool. And it helps you kind of keep track of that information. Whew. Wow. Hopefully, that was a jam packed. I feel like I just ran a ran, run, van. <laughs> I ran a marathon. But, um, who, let me check my list to make sure that I've covered everything. But I'm pretty sure I did cover everything humanly possible Whew. with this. Um, yeah, I think so. Okay, you guys. I hope that was helpful. I know it's a long time coming. If this video was helpful, give it a like. You can subscribe to my channel and you can be notified whenever I put out new bit. No, I almost did it again. New videos, not new buildings, Liliana. New videos when you click the little bell. All right, you guys. See you later. <laughs>